it's still October, Matt, which means it's still business planning month. So today, step one of our three steps to an effective business plan, setting your 2021 goals. Today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. You have clicked on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 138 and you can find all of our show notes as always over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jen O'Brien, it's finally cooled down over here on the uh, West Coast and I'm enjoying this like kind of brisk morning today on Friday. What is this? October 9th? Yes, what? October 9th. What? So, down. what temperature? It's like down to 55. That's like Ooh. nice. I know. Oh, you're actually a little bit cooler on the West Coast. I'm still on the East Coast, 66 degrees as I broadcast here from so, Georgia and Georgia. Yeah. So what's happening? So what's happening with Delta? Delta is, I, mean, it hasn't, I think it's supposed to hit land today there in Louisiana. Huh? So um, I, it looks like you're going to be able to escape tomorrow before uh, I, the storm gets up and we're near you. I watched the local forecast and it's the window is perfect. It's like... Uh. Saturday morning, which is tomorrow when my flight leaves, it's going to be clear. And then afternoon and Sunday is when that Delta rain is going to hit this North uh, Georgia. North Sweet. Georgia. So the weather god said, you know what, Jan O'Brien, you've experienced a long enough. scare. We're going to let you get out here after spending about, you know, a couple extra additional weeks there in, in uh, you know, the Southwest or the Southeast. But I have to say, what what you know, even though we've had so many restrictions for traveling, and I know a lot of folks listening haven't really been able to accomplish some of those travel goals or vacations or things that you had planned. You know, this this trip that I took really allowed me to get a lot of things accomplished, visit my family, of course. But I have used the time to do to get focused on goals for the new year and you have where I'm going to take my career and where we're going with everything, right? So. That really fits well into, and it's got me really fired up about continuing to talk as we always do here at WBNL Coaching on business planning. It is one of my favorite subjects, but I want to help everybody learn to love it a little bit more this year. Okay, so we're going to have some okay. fun talking about that. Get it, reach a couple more people, bring a couple more people onto the planning plateau, and you know what? That's a good thing. So let's dive into this. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. We're going to continue on in October. With, we have five different episodes around business planning and setting yourself up for a great new year, finishing the quarter strong. So last week, what did we talk about? Reviewing. You can't really jump into goals for the new year and what do you want to do differently and so on until you analyze where you've been so far, right? So right. that's classic. So. If you missed that episode, go back to episode 137, today's 138, and review that. We've got some worksheets in there to help you gather your numbers and assess where your business came from. So today I really wanna focus on just setting goals, okay? Now the reality is a lot of people don't do this. Um, the studies, you know, if you do the research, it's, it's you know, people, I don't know, maybe more people do it, but I, I'm gonna suggest 20% 20, 20 of the business people out there are really writing down their goals. 20 to 25 percent or at least that's what that's probably a very day. accurate number it might even be just a tad high but thanks for being optimistic okay well it's all good and all i know from the years of doing this myself and for teaching people this and getting people to share you know stories of hey give me an example of if you if you're a goal writer yes hands go up and then give us a story of something you did that you wrote down and you focused on set right. your intention around it and you accomplish it and there's there's story after story, and then there's celebrity stories, right? The classic Jim Carrey one always is in the, that's, it's not a myth. Everybody thinks it's a myth, but it really did happen. Or, you know, the story of Jim Carrey, a struggling actor, it comes from Canada. He writes a check for, I think a million, I don't know if it was a million or maybe it was $1 million. And he carried around a check for a million dollars. Uh, and now I'm maybe off on that, but it's something million, at least 1 million for a long time. And the, and the mask, when he landed that mask um, movie, the lead for that, it was whatever was on his check was the amount that was, you know, he carried around. So 
you know, I but, love it. But, uh, but wait, we digress. This is interesting at many levels here. So we're talking about Jim Carrey, who actually now is kind of like you're talking hearing about Jim Carrey again because of this oh. SNL last week. So wait, so you mentioned Jim Carrey, the movie The Mask. How appropriate is that right now? And now he's playing Joe Biden. Huh. It's another yeah. interesting Jim Carrey story. A little subliminal information coming out yeah. here for you today if you're picking that up oh, there you are. Uh, but but it's really cool there's so many great stories of that you know and there's so many books written on this you know my favorite one of my favorite three books around personal development business planning one of the three i always recommend to everybody is think and grow rich and that is ultimately what that book is all about right you know what you think about where you put your energy where you put your focus is what you're going to create now i'm going to walk through some ideas around goal setting and here's the deal you don't have to do it the way i'm talking about it you might just want to write down a couple things. You might want to take a snapshot of, of, a, of what your goal is and carry it around and put it on your phone. That's actually a technique that I've, I've been doing that for a long time. Long time. Matter, I have the, a picture of Dunedin, Florida, which is a goal area to get to. And honestly, I've been doing that for a year. And things are lining up that that's going to happen a lot sooner than I had thought. Okay, So just something simple like that is is it powerful because you're going to be working with your sub your subconscious mind and continuing to say things and see things that this is what your goal is whatever that is and everything you're doing on, on a daily basis is moving you a little bit towards that and it can be disappointing things can happen but honestly there are story after story after story of set your intention take small steps toward it and you're going to accomplish it but unless you let all the negative thinking and you know, this is what's powerful about goal setting in my mind. And this is more about, I like to call it outcomes sometimes, but I like also the word intentions. You know, people throw goals out there and it becomes one of those words like prospecting. So whatever you want to call this, what is it that you want? I'm going to walk you through a couple ideas of what you can do. So let's jump in. All right. So we're encouraging you to really do this. And by the way, have a free business planning course all the downloads, including a really cool goal setting package. So if you go over to wbnlcoaching.com, go to our store, click on the little beautiful graphic that Matt created for introduction to, not introduction, but just business plan. You will be able to immediately access our video tutorials, download all of our business planning documents. But today, in the next couple of weeks, we're gonna talk about the other documents that are in there. But today it's about take the goal package and walk through uh, the things that so come back and listen to this again, and I'm going to walk you through the things that you need to do. So first, let's talk about good old SMART goals, right? SMART, S-M-A-R-T. That's what your goals have to be. They need to be clear, concise, and simple, honestly, right, Matt? We are all about less is more, simplicity, show value, communicate clearly. You don't kind of things that you're doing. That even goes around the goal setting idea. So what does SMART stand for? S, and these are classic, and then I add a couple things to it from the years of doing it in the Jan O'Brien SMART goals, okay? So M, S, S is simple and specific, okay? So specific is, I, you know, you don't say I lose some weight. You're going to be specific about, you know, a number and a time and so forth. And simple just means don't make it all complicated. Make it easy so that you can say it every day or you can see it every day as an affirmation. M, measurable. Okay, that that is measurable just basically means at the end of the time frame you're going to put on it. So if I say I close 25 transactions by December 31st, 2021, I can go look at my, my spreadsheet that you'll get from WBNL Coaching and see have I closed, if I have been completing it as I close transactions, I'll see if I have accomplished that. I'll be able to track and measure that along the way. That's measurable. Meaningful to you is my other M. And this one I added because I found so many people in coaching them that are doing things for someone else, not for themselves. Does that make sense? Yep. You know, like, is the goal for you? Now, I'm not saying that you don't do something because it's what your family wants for you or your spouse or you're doing something for your kids. That's not what I mean. But if you don't have passion around the goal, if it's not meaningful to you now, for some people, that is the passion. Right. I'm doing this so that I can generate the income so that I can take care of my family. That's different. But if you're doing something because your dad wanted you to be a successful real estate agent or whatever, um, it ain't going to work. Simple. So it's got to be meaningful to you. A is attainable and as if now in all areas of your life. So let's break that down a little bit. A attainable doesn't mean that you don't 
Stretch. You, I think it's cool to have a stretch goal, but right. you shouldn't write something down you know you're going to do even if you didn't try. That's right. So attainable is a little bit of a stretch, but make it attainable so you're not disappointed. Like if you've never made a million dollars, and you know you probably don't want to write down I'm going to make a million dollars next year, okay? But if you're you know push right. yourself, maybe it's especially uh, next year. Fair enough. Um, as if now, this is super important. You're going to write your goals as if now they have already accomplished present tense. So I always tell people, be, do, have. Don't use the words I will, I want, you know, I might. That's almost what that's saying. I might, you know, earn 100,000. 100, I hate 100,000. Strike that from my memory right now. I earn $250,000 in closed transaction, closed commissions by December 31st, 2021. That's an example. I earn, you know, not I will earn, I want to earn. That's very important as of now. And then all areas of your life is really straightforward. You just don't write business goals. You write financial goals. That could be getting out of debt, saving emergency money, which by the way, saving six, that whole thing about having six months of expenses for living in business might be an awesome goal for all of us this year, right? Yeah. No kidding. I think, a lot you know, Dan, like, talking about as if, you know, as if now and, 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 you know, be, do, have, you, you've talked about that. You talked about that for years and years and years. And I think for a lot of people, that concept is kind of hard to wrap your head around because it doesn't, it, it you really have to get, dive in there and, and really understand what that concept is. And in the show notes today, we're going to give you, we'll put you a link back to the be, do, have concept and, and other places that we've talked about this in the past, because I think it's really important to just really wrap your head around what that really means and then really, really focus on your goals in that manner, because it really, you know, that's, that's like right there in the A in the middle of the whole smart, um, but, and it can get lost a little bit, but it's a really important part of the process. So just wanted to circle back I around. Yeah. B do have, well, we could do a whole episode on B do have, because it's I true. really love coming back to that about being in the moment and being here right now and using powerful language to make things, uh, uh, you know, happen. Right. All right, Sorry. So that's the A, that's beautiful. R is realistic and responsible. So responsible, it also means economical. It just means that whatever it is, it, there's res personal responsibility around it. And what it is that you're doing is, is good for you know everyone that's around you. Realistic, again, ties a little bit to uh, the previous one where we're attainable. Okay. But realistic is you know, this is something that's going to actually, you can actually do if you put the effort, time and energy and effort into it. You know, one of the things around realistic and attainable is our mind says, well, I've never made $250,000. And as a matter of fact, there is a, a, a download or a document in the package um, that we have for the free business planning that really ties back and it's called um, Keys to an Achievable Outcome. And, and I learned this when I went through training on neuro-linguistic programming. So NLP coaching, yeah, um, right. I did some serious training basic and, and master level of this great stuff. It's where I learned a lot of techniques that help me reframe things and that I use in coaching. But this is this is how they teach. They were teaching us how to create goals. And it's to take it through these nine questions. I'm not going to go through all of those here. But when you download our package, you'll have it. So when you take one of your big goals, it's going to walk you through these nine questions that if you really dive in and answer those questions, you'll formulate the best language around that outcome and you'll know if it's really fit smart, basically. And the one, the, one of the questions that I like in here is that, can you attain this? So the question says, well, have you ever done it before? So if my goal is I earn 250,000 in commissions by December 20, December 31st, 2021, I'm going to go, I never earned 250,000. So now your brain is already starting to go. You can't yeah. do that. It's like, you know, blah, 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 all this self-talk, negative self-talk. So the next part of in this question in this worksheet says, do you know anyone who has? And then you go, well, yeah. Okay. So, you know, it's, but it can be done. It right. can be done. It's not like it's never been done. Great story, a great story that we do in our team. And if you remember Matt in our business planning, of course we did record it quite a while ago. It is evergreen and you're going to get to see Matt on these videos too, which is just awesome. Uh, Matt is the taskmaster. He's going to make you do all the work uh, when you, when I go through and show you how to do it. But there, I use that story of Roger Bannister, the guy who wrote the four minute mile, right? And this is what we mean by mindset and how powerful your brain is. 
And if you remember the story of Roger Bannister, I'm pretty sure that's his name, um, is you could Google check me right now, Matt, while we're talking. But anyway, no one had ever uh, gone under four minutes in the mile. And then when he did it, all of a sudden, what started happening? Lots of people started breaking the four minute mile and it's even sub four now. In fact, if you were, if Matt's Googling while I'm talking, I would love to know what is the record right now for the fastest one minute, I mean, the fastest mile on record because it's well below four minutes. Sure right? it is. And the reality is that's what we're talking about here is that even sometimes people, the, the whole, you know, you know, mentality of people in existence at that time was like, no one can run a four minute, a sub four minute mile. Uh, and then it, then it happened. And then, every, then all of a sudden everybody started doing it. Not everybody, but all of a sudden there were people that were like, oh, this can be done because someone has done it. So that is a very long story to say when you are writing your goals, <laughs> when you're writing your goals and you're like, well, I've never done that. Change immediately that language you do know someone if it's around that or whatever the goal is, you just have to stop and go, has anybody ever done this? Okay, then great. You already have a model of that behavior that can be done and then you can take it from there. Right. Um, hey, just as if I can jump in here, you were correct on the name, obviously there. Uh, the current record uh, set in 1999 uh, is actually 3.43 uh, by a Moroccan, actually, uh, his, I'm not going to even pre try to pronounce his name. It's Haikam, I believe, is the, how you pronounce the first name. The last name I would not get right. So, uh, yeah. 43 seconds is now the fastest. Uh, 343. 343. See, powerful stuff. And I forget when Bannister broke that, but I feel like it was in the, good Lord, it might have been like the 40s or 50s or something. It was a long while ago. Okay, T in the small. 54. What was it again? 1954. I knew I was pretty good. I was going to say that was very, very I had good. five. I had 50 and I had four. I knew the numbers. Okay. So time yes, frame, did. time frame clearly put a time frame on your goals because otherwise you'll just be like, yeah, what well, some, at some point eventually I'm going to make 250,000, you know, it, there needs a time frame. And the other T very important to me toward what you want. Now, what this means is this helps with the affirmative. Remember goals are written in a positive, powerful present tense. Do you like that alliteration, Mr. Wow. Allen. Okay. And the towards what you want simply means that you don't write a negative goal. So when I'm working with anybody, when I focus on things, it's like, where do you want to go? Not avoiding where you've been. Right. So an example of somebody who wants to quit smoking, they, they don't write, I, you know, I quit smoking by this day. You know, it, it's more like, um, I'm a non-smoker would be maybe a better way to do it. And not even non-smoker. That's even a little bit negative in there. It's, there's a better way to, 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 to affirm that. And it, maybe it's around, um, I don't know, maybe non-smokers the way I usually use a weight example. And you don't say, you know, I want to lose 10 pounds. You can simply say, I am my perfect size, whatever, or my perfect weight, whatever. You say that I am, remember, uh, B do have, I am, I do, I have. Okay, so those are the the smart the the modified smart goal model so you're going to write them down in all areas of your life so when i mean all areas it's personal financial business career your relationships and family and spiritual so we have a worksheet for you that breaks down those areas and follow these deals uh there's an action plan from I, I, that i love from getting things done one of my other favorite books so i've mentioned two of my favorite books today which is napoleon hill's think and grow rich Getting Things Done by James Allen. And we might as well mention the third book because I think you have to read that one too. And that's The E-Myth Revisited. That's the best Wow, book. you've never mentioned that book before. The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. There's your three books if you need to put those on your list for personal goals or maybe listening, there get the audible, or reading some excellent books for you, revisit those. Um, so we'll talk later in upcoming sessions here in, on our podcast about creating the action plans around. That's what we're going to get into next week and measure and track your results and celebrating your successes. We'll get into the details of that uh, in upcoming episodes. Um, but this getting things done, part of the worksheet, the little bundle that you'll get from our free business plan downloads and course. I love it because what it does is it lets you take whatever that goal is. And this could be projects. You could use this one worksheet for project goals or other goals and that require multiple steps to accomplish it. And it helps you. I really like sharing this idea around goals. And this is what we're going to basically take you through. What is your real estate goals? How many closings or how much money you want to make? And in the next couple weeks, we're going to talk about what do you have to do to make that happen? 
Well, there's a worksheet in here that's going to help you in your other areas your, of your life goals to uh, whatever that goal may be to then take what are the next action steps, the very next thing that you need to start working on to accomplish that goal. It's also great for project management. And the reason I want to take a minute to talk about this is that you've got to do more than write your goals down when you're ready to start working on them. You almost have to come up with what's the game plan to get there, right? Yep. So if you do that ahead of time, and because our days and weeks and everything goes by so quickly, right? We are, we don't have a lot of time. I really don't feel like anybody has any time. You have to find time to make downtime, right, Matt? There's always something. I, you know what? I would actually uh, disagree with you on that. Yeah. I think that we as a society over the years, especially in the last 10 years, have, uh, we waste a lot of time. Oh, and what dude. I mean by that is not that you're just doing something frivolously, but I think that there are, we, I'll just tell you, I'll miss this. I'm going to say it. We spend too much time on our devices and I'm not saying that you're not doing something that you feel as though it's important, but honestly, really, truly, 100%. you can get back hours of time in your week, hours. I'm talking a whole day of time back. If you really, do you, do you have you, do you have your, uh, your, um, your usage Goodbye. thing on your phone? Does it tell you how much your your you use your phone on a daily basis? Or have you turned that off? Uh, I for, no, I forget how to go find it though. Because I have my my notification that comes on every week, and I'm really I watch that because I do find that all of a sudden you could be sitting there and uh, you know, an hour has passed and you have done literally nothing except for search around your damn phone. And so I don't know that we don't have time. I think that we are not using our time. Well, I, I well reframe that a hundred percent. You are so correct, sir. It's it's you're exactly right. We do not make the right, you know, we waste that's right. too much time. And we're we, focusing and our time, you know, we feel as though that's that's activity, right. you know, and it's and the it's feeling hard. is that you never have enough time because because let's face it, since the advent of smart devices, all the way we get our information media, we're inundated, which then affects the way we're thinking. Yep. It's the anxiety going on for everybody. Long gone are the days where you go do your thing and you have to you know you don't talk to somebody until you get to a phone at home or something. Right? Can you remember those good old days? These I young do. people were like, what? No, the young people in their twenties and thirties they don't remember all that stuff. No. None of that. They didn't grow up with that. They grew up with this. That's this right. Is all they know. And I think you're right about that. It, we haven't really even done. We've done to see, but we don't know totally what this is doing to all the younger generations of, of in their relationships. And, all that. So anyway, the, the whole point I'm making here is uh, to get back on track with our uh, our last little piece here is if you go ahead and stay organized and, and create your action steps, when you do make the time to work on your goals or your projects, then you're not because this is what I find people do. OK, I'm going to carve out this hour. I'm going to work on X project, something around the house that I've been wanting to do or whatever else, whatever. Just think of the million things that you're always wanting to work on. These are big items. Yeah. Now what you'll do is you'll spend the next hour figuring out what you need to do. So the power of the getting things done model is to get your action items all down. The next step, when I do that, what's, a good, what's the next thing that I have to do? Now you pull that out because you could find time. You could be waiting in a doctor's office, for example. That's right. You could, doing, you could be standing online somewhere. You could just find yourself saying, okay, now you pull out your project list or your goal list and say, what could I work on right now? I have 20 minutes of undivided I can give my undivided attention to what can I knock off my list? I love that approach. Uh, otherwise you're constantly writing lists and trying to get organized and you're not in charge of your time, right? Yep. Planning so, to plan. Now we have a couple other links in our show notes today, um, from our blog. I'm going to have to check those links now that I say that Matthew, okay. uh, but it, it's on some posts we've written long ago on principles of success, clarity of purpose, things that are going to help you, around goal setting and affirmations and so forth. So there are there a lot of resources in the show notes today. And don't forget to go to wbnlcoaching.com to our store and get this business plan and do it this year. I yeah, Jen O'Brien, when you actually start business planning, what's the first I mean really seriously, if you're gonna if you're just gonna you know walk us through what you you what your process is, what do you think of first? Business what do you really do first? For real estate. For real estate? No, I mean, just in general, if you're sitting down saying, hey, I'm going to do my plan for 2021, where where do you start? 
honestly, I have to have the numbers from before. I right. I have to go back and look at look at where I've at. That's exactly what I. So it's I not what you about. talked about today. It's funny because I have a different approach to business planning, and I think everybody does. And I think that there's different ways to look at it. And I think some people get turned off if they don't. I mean, you have to do it the way it's going to work for you, right? With okay. me, I my philosophy has philosophy has always been. I work to live. I don't live to work. Right. So, and I think most people are like that in most thing, but I mean, I, I talk about it. That is just the thing that I, that is the way I live my life. Right. Work is not number one ever. It's not ever number one. Right. And that happened around my wife had breast cancer about, well, gosh, now it's been about 12. Oh my gosh. Almost 20 years ago. Well, no, 17 years ago. Right. That changed my life because at that point, you know, we didn't know we, I thought I might lose her. Right. And before that, it was all work, 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 work. You know what? Different focus. And ever since then, I've had a very different focus on that. Right. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that's what's right for everybody. But I always go into when I'm starting to think about what the plan and what I want to do in the upcoming year around what we're going to do together as a as a family. Right. And for us, it's travel. So for me, I always start looking at what are we going to do next year and what do we want to accomplish and where do we want to go? And then and then. How do you back into that from a work standpoint? How are you going to make money to actually get to that? So that's what works for me as opposed to the other way around, starting at the business end of it, because that's not what drives me. What drives me is the other side. So, and you already talked about that too. I mean, you, you have to plan every part of your life. But for me, in order to even wrap my head around getting started on something, that's where I start. And maybe not just next year, maybe you plan out a few years, you know what I'm saying, as far as where you want to be. But I'm just saying that that is the way, that's what motivates me. And everyone gets motivated a little bit differently. But see, that's brilliant because, it, you know, and we do when we get into the business planning, um, that some other things that we'll share probably in the fifth week or through the rest of the year, we, we put together some things on that where you get right. focused on, you know, your path, your path for 2021. Sure. And really the focus on that was what, what do you, where do you want to go? What, 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 what fun things are you going to accomplish this year and go and plan them and put them down there so you can make them a reality so that you don't from my point of view, just, you know, you're, we're sharing the differences in, in, in our two mindsets because I'm just work first. I, I come yep. from work. Always. Work first. And you know what, Jan and Brian, that's Always. why we are good business partners because we do balance each other out a lot on both of these things. And not just when you're planning, but in everything we do there, we are not the same at all. You know what I mean? But our styles mesh so well together and that's what's made us, you know, be able to be partners for five years, which is practically unheard of. Ah. Exactly. So. Well, honestly, that's really eye opening what you're saying. And it's like, I love what you said. And I love, I hope everybody heard that, that, you know, you do need to know what is your main motivation? What is your why? Why are you doing all this? And Matt just shared what it is for him and what's, and then it becomes, all right, to make those things happen that are important to us and our life, this is what I got to go do. So love it. Right. Great stuff. Okay. So hopefully we've inspired you to find a way that you, it will enjoy and work on setting some goals for 2021 and beyond if you want to go a little bit further, because that's what I've been working on. It's the five year plan. What's the that's two right. year plan? And then if you do know what you're, you know, getting up to the to the age I am, well, and mad because we happen to be born in the same year. Mm. I don't want to forever. Okay, so it's the exit strategy idea, which we coach a lot. What does that look like? What's the year that I'd perfectly love to be spending time just in traveling and being up close to the beach in Florida where I want to be and seeing my family and maybe doing some other things that are important and not always be doing what I'm doing now. Right. That's right. And then you can back plan, right. And you can back plan and say, all right, what do I have to do in the next, whatever that time frame is that if that's 10 years, maybe that's about 10 years for me. Great. What do I have to accomplish in the next five years, the next couple of years. And then it gets us down to where we are today. And what am I going to do? Um, in this next year to work towards that ultimate goal. And that is important, not just looking at 2021. You got to do the long-term planning as well. Right. And we have all of that in our, our uh, goal setting stuff and some other things we'll share with you as we go through the month of October to get you really thinking about your life path, your exit strategy, and then your hyper-focus on 2021 and how to enjoy 2021. And let's hope that we have the ability to do a little bit more traveling and we shall see. This has been the year of adjustments. It has. Making changes and, and learning to, to live in a new sort of normal, a new, it, frankly, things have become normal now, right? I mean, the wearing of masks alone, it's like people don't even think twice of that unless you're just a non-mask wearer. <laughs> and then that's another point. 
But seriously, right? It's a it's a new it, 2020 has been the year of radical change. That's right. Um, so you have to adapt that in your 2021 plan and make sure you're prepared yeah, for that. Your attitude and your adjustment to that and what you've done, I and mean, we've talked about it since the pandemic started here on the past, what we've done with the company, what we've done with our teams. And I know so many people that's positive and focused and pivoted and found a way to make it work or doing fine. That's right. And, so you can do that. Too. Better, better than fine. The real estate industry is one of the one industries that's done extremely well through all of this. And that's right. That's all good news for us, right? So that's it, Matt Emerson. We we shall uh, continue on in the October business plan month. But next week, it's all about our actual business plan, digging into the real estate side of your plan, and maybe maybe sharing some great ideas around what, you, what your goals are. I want to be able to share with you the idea of uh, action items, the five daily, you know, picking your five things that you're going to do on a daily. So we're going to give you some some really great strategies that will help you accomplish those goals. That's awesome. Good stuff. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. Well, that's a wrap for episode 138 of the Wandering Without Loss podcast, where real estate and reality meet. You can find all of our show notes once again over at WBNLpodcast.com. John O'Brien, October is always kind of a fun month because we do enjoy the conversation around business planning, you know, and the review. And now we've kind of started about setting some goals and we're going to continue it on next week, which is really good. You know, we just talked a little bit about, you know, your device, right? And the t- amount of time you spend on the device. I have a short story to tell about that. Right. Yesterday, um, I'm getting ready to do my yearly physical. So yesterday I went to the doctor's office and went to the lab and had my blood test. So it'll be ready next week when I go to get my physical. And of course, the one thing I think that COVID has done, not just in the medical profession, but a lot of different places, is it's really made things way more efficient and organized. And I freaking love it. You go to the doctor's place right now and they have these beautiful tents set up outside because, you know, you're going to be outside and you're waiting before, you know, you get into the lab and you're all jammed in there waiting for your lab time. It's horrible, right? So they have all these seats set up outside under this tent. It's all, everyone's all, you have a lot of space around you. It's wonderful. You know, and I didn't, there's no, I didn't make an appointment to go. So I was waiting there and there were probably, I don't know, eight or nine people ahead of me and they were all spaced out. We were sitting there and I sat down and I thought to myself, wow, this is really kind of nice. And um, I was looking around and every single person was on their device which you would expect because, you know, you're waiting, right? And I thought to myself, I'm going to try a little experiment. I'm going to sit here and not pick up my device the whole time I'm waiting here to go into the lab. And it is really, really hard. (laughs) Because what do you do? I mean, what did we do in the past? You just sit around and look at people? Read a a magazine, picked up a magazine. I'm telling you, I did not have any of that because I wasn't planning on doing this exercise before I went there. So I kept that phone in my pocket the whole entire time. And I probably waited, oh, 20, 25 minutes. Can you imagine not picking your phone up for 25 minutes when you're just sitting there literally doing nothing? Right. And I thought it actually was a great exercise because and the reason why I even brought it up today is because I did that yesterday and I was think you you I was thinking about my day. I was thinking about things need to be done. I was thinking about places I wanted to go. I was using my mind instead of just looking at things and reading, playing games and doing whatever else you do on your damn phone. You know what I mean? And it was a really interesting experience. And I'm going to try to do that more often because it and I actually even did it last night when I got home. Because a lot of times I don't know what happened to just watching TV. You can't even just watch TV anymore because you have to watch TV and be doing something else, right? Wow. I would have been checking my email because when I have downtime like that, I feel like I'm so behind on all these emails because right. I have multiple emails and I just delete, delete, delete. But I'm with you. That, that must have been. I'm just saying it was a wonderful experience and I think everyone should try it. And it's really hard. <laughs> if you really make yourself do it, it was really, really hard. So. Uh, I like it. We should. We should do an unplugged talent. Yep. All right, well, we will be broadcasting both of us West Coast uh, next week. That's right. And we'll see you then. All right, and be forever wandering but not lost. After you get up, get out and mask up. <laughs> Watch that space. 